adventure. Oh, Paimon wonders how Minnie Duran is getting along in Simulanka. Let's go to the Forest of Blessings and take a look. Here's your two magic tonics. Why, thank you, young lady. And might I add that you're looking quite lovely today. Jean, come on, take a seat and let's have a drink. I ordered one for you as well. <sighs> but is this really appropriate? I mean... Still worried about Clee? <laughs> Relax. Albedo's with her. She'll be fine. Oh, look who it is. The Traveler and Paimon. You must be the pleasant surprise that Miss Alice told us about. Greetings to you both. This is one place I didn't expect to run into you two. The locals here have been talking non-stop about some brave heroes who saved the world. Let me guess. You two have been up to your old tricks. Well, not just us. We only played a small part. You could say we were two members of the Heroes Adventure Team. Still sounds mighty impressive to me. As ever, our honorary knight is making us proud wherever they roam. That's right. We received a letter of invitation from Miss Alice, proposing that we take Clee for a vacation in Fairyland when work dies down. I wasn't sure what she meant by Fairyland at first, but if my eyes are not deceiving me, she was being quite literal. Klee ran off excitedly as soon as we arrived. <sighs> I'm a little worried about her, but Albedo insisted he would look after her while we do our own thing. We could hardly say no to such a considerate offer, so I took it upon myself to bring Jean to the nearest tavern we could find. Any excuse for a drink, huh? <laughs> well, we are on vacation. It's only fair that we get to indulge ourselves a little. <laughs> You're right. I should make an effort to relax and unwind. It's what Miss Alice would want, after all. Oh, wait, Kaya? What exactly did you order from the bar? The house special, of course. Best way to get a taste of the local culture. <laughs> Why are you making that face, Paimon? Ah, uh, nothing. I was just perpetually amused by your lifestyle, that's all. Go on, drink up. Hmm, something tells me I need to tread carefully here. Let's see, it's got a lovely color, but how about the taste? I think maybe I'll pass, but it's such a shame to waste it. <laughs> All right, Paimon. Well played. Well, Paimon got burned too, if it's any consolation. It's nothing personal. Oh, by the way, we weren't the only ones who got invited here. I saw Kale earlier. She didn't see me, though. She was making a beeline for that big tree. The Kingdom of Breezes and Bells, you mean? Oh, this is turning into a huge reunion! Maybe we should go say hi to her! All right. Well, give her my regards. Thank you. Enjoy your time here, too. So the magic tonic here is just... writing ink? What a weird and wonderful world. Ah, Miss Citrus, do you happen to serve any beverages here that don't contain magic tonic? Of course we do. What flavor would you like? Hmm, Sunsetia. Jean, you want in? 
<laughs> sure, I'll have the same, please. Sounds good. Two Sunsetia drinks coming right up. The structure of the treehouse is here is nothing short of amazing. I have to write it down so I can tell Master Tainari all about it later. Hey, Kale! Uh, oh, you scared me. Traveler and Paimon, you got invited here too? Yep. Well, they sort of skipped the invitation part, but anyway, what you doing out here? Something caught your eye? Oh, yeah. I'm trying to observe and summarize the structures of the trees here. And also the animals that live here. Uh, well, the residents, I guess? I still can't get over the fact that they're all someone's origami handiwork. Once a forest ranger, always a forest ranger, huh? Not sure if you'll be able to apply much of what you learn here back home, though. With this being a magical world and everything... What? Over there, by the giant footprint, have those houses always been there? Oh, those? The local flying squirrels told me that they were built by a small dragon and some guy wearing a hat. Oh, that must have been Mini Durin and Hat Guy. Uh, any idea where they went? Supposedly, after building the houses, they went to somewhere called, uh, Constellation Metropole? Did I say that right? Yep, you got it! Oh, also, when the locals mentioned the dragon, did they seem at all... Uh... Did they say how they felt about him at all? Hmm... Now that you mention it, the atmosphere changed a little when they talked about him. Oh no... They mentioned some stuff along the lines of... Past misunderstandings and welcoming new members. I only just got here, so... I know very little about what has happened in the past. They seemed genuinely grateful for the houses, though, and said they were going to plan a welcome party. Oh, thank goodness. Whew. Sounds like the forest has begun to accept him. It's a step in the right direction. Are you looking for that small dragon? Yeah, he's a new friend we made after we arrived here. No way! Really? I'm getting more and more interested in your story. Uh, no, no, no. I've got to save her for next time. For now, I've got to make the most out of my time in this wonderful world. Oh, there's no rush. Just take it slow and enjoy yourself. Like Kaya. Oh, he sends his regards, by the way. Oh, Mr. Kaya is here too? Then I've got to go say hi to him. Well, right now he's at the tavern and he probably won't be leaving until he's drunk. Not that he'll ever reach that point because his alcohol tolerance is so high. Basically, it's Kaya. You know where to find him. <laughs> you make a good point, Paimon. Then I'll focus on exploring for now and go catch up with him later. Shall we go pay a visit to the Metropole Traveler? Maybe Minnie Durin and Hat Guy are still there. Oh, right. By the way, something pretty interesting has been happening in Sumeru recently. Master Trinari has been working really hard on it, so if you have time, Definitely go and check it out. Sounds good. We'll found some time in our schedule. Of course. See you later. The origami squirrels rely on wind currents to lift their agile bodies and easily move between the trees. This has created a truly unique ecosystem. Uh, oh no, I'm running out of pages on my notebook. What? Uh, are my eyes deceiving me? There is no way, I can't believe it. We heard you muttering from a long way away. What's up? Oh, is your scry glass acting up again? Oh, it's you, the saviors of this world. My scry glass is fine, but I'm not sure I can say the same about my eyes. Look, 
Look at this statue. What? Is it broken or something? Looks fine to Paimon. That's your master, right? A.K.A. the Goddess of Prophecy? Mm, I refuse to believe it. There's no way that old hag looks anything like this. When she was younger... Oh, actually, now that you mention it, this does remind me of the fashionista phase she wrote about in her diary. <laughs> she can't hear me, can she? I swear I just got chills down my spine. Uh, either way, it's probably a little rude to talk about her right under her statue. But how do you know it's a statue of her if you never saw her as a young woman? I did a quick scry when I came into this world, and when I saw the star's reflections, I was at a loss for words. It looks like fate in Simulanka is based directly on Tevat. A projection of real-world fate to form an image of reality. Or in layman's terms, uh, basically, the creator made this world inside a mirror or a lake, and this world is the reflection. Still sounds pretty impressive. The more I scryed, the more familiar everything looked. It's her work, there's no doubt about it. Even so, everything's far more complex than I'd imagined. Trying to decipher it all is giving me quite a headache. I also asked the locals about her. They call her she who has dominion over the stars and the course of fate itself. Not even a pretense of humility. Clearly, she let the role of creator goddess get to her head. Not that I'm surprised in the least, of course. It certainly matches the tone of her diary. <clears throat> anyway, we should change the topic. Oh, so Mona, have you seen a small dragon around by any chance? He's about the same size as Paimon, but with tiny little wings. Ah, you mean the one that caused all that trouble. I haven't seen him for myself, but I heard that he came to the Metropole not long ago to formally apologize for his actions. Apparently, he brought a huge stash of titanium and plant oil to make amends. Most people accepted his apology, although there are some who said that they'll reserve judgment until they've seen how he acts in the future. Oh, okay. Do you know where we can find him? One moment. Looks like he's at the Broken Sea. There's a big group of people with him, too. Cool! Wanna come with us? We can introduce you! Hmm... I think I'll sit this one out. This might be the closest I ever get to meeting the old hag in our youth, so... I think I'll spend some time seeing what else I can glean from her grand design. Uh, you guys have fun. Anytime. We'll be off now. See you later, Mona! Creating a whole world starscape is no easy task. Old Hag, I guess you do deserve the title of Trismegistus after all. Osvaldo Hafnavines! Does thou see what I am seeing? Tell me that my all-perceiving Aug de Verertelung deceiveth me not! Your eyes see true, main Fräulein. Very well. Then, as sovereign ruler of the Immenachreich, I extend to you both my greetings, O Night Dragon from the Land of the Thousand Stars and his hat-wearing servant. Who did you just call a servant? What main Fräulein means to say is, hello, it's a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you too! <laughs> but Hot Guy's not my servant, he's my friend! <sighs> now you're over-explaining. Hot Guy, Mini Durin! Found you at last! 
Whoa, and Fischl's with you too? Oh, greetings, Outlander, blessed by the Imanakreish. How honored you are to meet your princess and beneath the stars of another sky. Clearly a decision made by fate itself. Miss Honorary Knight, Paimon! Greetings. You both look well. Hey there, Glee! Have you been having fun here? Yup! Loads and loads of fun! There are so many cute animals! And a magic train that was really long! And a huge, huge castle! And a king lives there and everything! I've been taking Glee to see all the sights. It's been a very enriching experience. Alice's magic is truly outstanding. Yeah, Mom's amazing! Klee wants to build a great big house now, too! So... Your mom and my mom... were friends? Mm-hmm. Our moms were friends, which makes you my big brother! My mom used to read your mom's stories to me all the time. They were great! Big brother? Wow! Thank you, Klee! Can I go play with Klee, Hat Guy? Suit yourself. Albedo! Albedo, can I? Go on. Uh, just don't go too far away. I'll come pick you up later. Yay! Come on, Mini Durin! Do you want to come play with us too, Fischl? <laughs> your princess and accepts your invitation. <gasps> Rejoice! Though you may be concealed by fog, still you shall have the good fortune to witness the true might of the Aug de Vertelung. What Main Fräulein means to say is, perhaps we can all play hide and seek together. Main Fräulein is it. <laughs> Hooray! I love hide and seek! Oh, me too! To return to our previous discussion, Mr. Hat Guy, you were telling me about a prophecy? I heard B talking to M. What she said was... Since you're so persistent, let me tell you a secret. Our child will one day rise from the dead. Uh, is she saying... Dragonspine Durin will come back to life? I only heard it in a memory, so don't hold me to it. Understood. My recent observations at Dragonspine lend credence to this prophecy as well. Durin's heart has slowly but surely been growing in vitality. The process is extremely slow, but the trend is clear. Uh, what should we do? To start with, plan for every potential scenario. Including, of course, the worst case scenario. <sighs> I am well aware of Durin's past, and I sincerely hope that things never escalate to that point. Still, we need to be prepared for every possibility. If the prophecy is true, and Durin's heart will one day beat again, I'd like to hope that whatever rises from the dead is no evil dragon, if you understand what I mean. Kind of? But not really. And so, when the time comes, Mr. Hat Guy, will you and Simulanka's Durin be willing to lend us a hand in our hour of need? Huh? What's this got to do with me? You save the Durin of this world. I don't see that as a mere coincidence. If there is any meaning to be read into the actions of the three goddesses, beyond fairy tale whimsy alone, I can only boldly speculate that the fate of this reflected world may have a reciprocal effect upon our own world. If Durin of Dragonspine will soon come back to life, we will need many Durin's help. 
as well as yours, given that your fates are now intertwined. Ah, <sighs> well that's a nuisance. To be sure, it certainly won't be easy. Albedo, Albedo! There's a flying paper ship over there! Can we go see it together, please? Sure. Uh, two seconds, I'll be right with you. Please give my suggestion some thought, Mr. Hat Guy. <sighs> Hat Guy, I'm back! Huh? What were you guys talking about? <sighs> Nothing. Um... Huh. Okay then, let's go join the others. Everyone's going to check out the new origami ship! <sighs> Alright, I'll be right there. Why would I be? Do I strike you as someone who cares about other people's issues? Quit trying to guess what I'm thinking. I'm leaving. The forest fairy helped us make it! Paimon just realized there's a lot fewer people around the Broken Sea now. Guess most of them have made their way back to the Metropole. Does this boat have a name? I can't see one anywhere. Huh? A name? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Every boat has a name. At least, all the ones I've seen before. They're usually symbolic names that represent something aspirational. Hmm. Hmm. Let's go with... the Durin. Huh? You want to name it after me? Oh, you mean to wish Mini Durin a safe voyage as he sails into a new chapter of his life beyond this world? Your princessin approves. Let this vessel bear the name of the most esteemed dragon of the night. The Turin. <laughs> Let's call it that then. Thank you, hat guy. Also, can I ask you a favor? Go on. Remember how mom's friend said I should be able to leave this world? Well... I want to pay a visit to your world! Just a quick trip, can we? Huh? Oh, uh, is... is that a no? Paimon thinks that's a great idea! If the people of Simulanka are allowed to go to Tevat, then what's the problem with taking Mini Durin there for a visit? I'm assuming I'll have to be your bodyguard while we're there? I... I can protect myself! And I'll do what you say. I won't fly off on my own, I promise. Please, can I go? <sighs> It'll be up to you to stick close. If you disappear on me, don't expect me to come looking. Got it! I'll stick close! Why don't you take the Durin? Now you've given it a name, it'll be a maiden voyage for the boat and a brand new journey for you. Are you leaving, Mini Durin? Okay. Well, make sure you come visit me in Mondstadt so we can play together again. Klee will draw you a map to show you the way. Though our time together has been as fleeting as a ray of light in the depths of the long night, the Imanokreish will welcome you with the grandest of music ceremonies on the occasion of our next reunion. As surely as the stars in the sky watch over us, we shall meet again. What Main Fräulein means is that you're always welcome to visit her at home as well. Cool! Oh, I have so many new friends now! I'm so happy! <sighs> Are you done yet? If you want to leave, then get over here. Thank you, everyone! Thank you so much! The blessings you gave me are more precious than any treasure, and more beautiful than any fairy tale! Next time, it will be my turn to make your wishes come true!
<clears throat> Oz! Uh, though I customarily refer to you as my familiar, in truth, I... I have always seen you as... Say no more, main Fräulein. I, Osvaldo Horafnavines, hereby pledge to always stay by your side. Hmm. <laughs> Quite rightly so. The Princessin should expect no less from her most favored Nachtrabin. I couldn't agree more, main Fräulein. Ah. <sighs>